if I'm making a video about an album that's 15 years old and it's not even a live album or a live video, then there better be a good reason. I'm going to talk about that right now. Hey everybody, Chris King here. This is the Love Live Music Channel. Thanks for clicking on my link. If you've never been here before, a lot of times I like to talk about live music. I like to watch live performances, give my thoughts on them, listen to some live albums, maybe watch a old live concert DVD or something that I see on streaming or whatever, or go into live shows someday. I hope to do that. And then sometimes I just like to talk about music that I love, which brings us to the reason that I'm here today because as you know I love some Prince my all-time favorite musician and Prince put out a record 15 years ago a record that I think is one of his best at least in the last 15 years of creative output of Prince this has got to be one of the top two or three albums that he put out and the record is called 3121 3121 one, which happens to be March 1st, 2021, which is when I'm putting this video up for you to check out to remind you it's 3121, baby. You got to go listen to this album. So let's dive into the tracks. You know, when this album came out at the same time, Prince was doing a Las Vegas residency and I'm still kicking myself for not making the trip out there to see it because he had created uh, much in the way a lot of Vegas residencies are. Uh, he had created his own little theater set up that I believe was called the 3121 Theater. And that's where the name of the album kind of ties into this. The first track, 3121, is where we kick things off. What this track's about, I don't know exactly. He's basically inviting you to a party at 3121. It's where you want to be. It's where all the cool people are. He sings it in kind of a lower register. It sounds like if you're familiar with the stuff that he did under the guise of Camille, this sounds like a Camille song. Um, musically and vocally, he sings in that Camille voice. I'm probably... There are probably bigger Prince fans than I am that will hit me in the comments and say, yes, this is an official Camille song or no, it's not. I could have gone to the Prince vault and looked it up before, but really I just wanted to give you my thoughts and my feelings on this album that I love. I really love this album. Hadn't listened to it in a while, but went back and listened to it a few times over the weekend and man, real good. So track two, we go into Lolita. You're sweet up, but you never make a cheetah out of me. And another good funk jam. You should put this one on mixtapes. It's definitely some uplifting Prince music for your Prince fans that maybe stopped listening around Diamonds and Pearls. Or maybe stopped listening around, you know, the turn of the century. It's a good record. We go into Te Amo Corazon, which is Prince Latin Flair. Somebody had posted up in one of the Prince groups that I'm in on social media about a song that you would want to hear Prince and Carlos Santana work together on, collaborate on. And this was my first thought was this song. But really, I think there's another track on this album that might even be a better one. Uh, leaving Tiamo Corazon, we go into the fourth track. One of my all-time favorite songs by Prince is Black sweat. This is primo Prince funk dance floor hotness. And I love this song so much. It even contains one of my favorite Prince lyrics that I feel like completely encompasses. If you're a Prince fan, you've been listening and you know so much about the music. He's got this one part of this song that just really, to me, ties in Everything about Prince in this one little part. I'm play it here and hopefully I'll get away with this. All right, it's coming right here. You ready? I got a brand new dance. That right there, that little, I got a brand new dance and it's called the, uh, I just, that to me, that is Prince tied up. And this song, you know, a little bit of it, a little bit of it reminds me of Fill You Up, which was a B-side from 
way back. What was that the B-side to? Maybe Party Man from the Batman era? But it reminds me of that. Uh, Fill You Up was never a hit. It was kind of a B-side that a lot of us loved. But Black Sweat is definitely one of my favorite Prince tracks of of all. I mean, I would put this on the in my top. I put this in my top 20. Next, we go into Incense and Candles, which is a little bit of a duet. I think he's singing with Tamar. I know she's on a track later on the album, and I think I think she's the one that's on this track. I could be wrong. Uh, Incense and Candles, I like the song. It goes into one thing, and you know, if I have to make a very short list of things that I've never loved about Prince, it would probably be when he relies on a rap style delivery. I don't think that ever really suited him very much. Uh, maybe because when he, when he tends to do it, he puts a lot of immediate energy into it where I think maybe it would suit him better if his rap style was more laid back and cool instead of, um, you know, hyped up and kind of in your face a little bit. So I don't know. That's just how I feel about Prince rapping. Clearly not one of the things he's known for as much as he is everything else because he's Prince. Then we go into another amazing classic Prince track that you probably don't know unless you're a super Prince fan. And let's not kid ourselves those are probably the only people that are watching it this deep in at this point, but the song love, I love this song. It's, it's a long one. It's like five and a half minutes. Go listen to this track and, and you'll be like, Oh my gosh, this is my new favorite Prince jam. It's got this, it's got this funky stomp kind of vibe to it, but parts of the song and, and even <laughs> it's interesting that parts of the song, I feel like, take off like in flight. And the interesting part is it's when he's singing about flying so high and it just really ties together that the song to me has movement. And that's something that I always look for in my favorite tracks is a song that feels like it's moving. And that's, I don't know, that's how I process love by Prince. Good, good track. Next up is Satisfied. A Prince slow jam of which, let's not kid ourselves, there are a lot of Prince slow jams. And I can't say that I love them all. Certainly there are a few that I probably these days would skip over if I'm listening to a full album. But this one comes in at a tight two minutes and 50 seconds. And it's got kind of a throwback, Stax, early 70s, Memphis, you know, late 60s, early 70s, Memphis soul type sound. There's a Hammond B3 that's kind of holding down the bottom end of it. And he's singing in his falsetto. And it's a real, it's a tight, good, slow jam of Prince. Satisfied. Not a throwaway track. It's pretty good. Then we go into Fury, which I believe he performed on Saturday Night Live around the time that this album came out. He did Fury and he did, uh, I think he did the track that I'll talk about later that was the other duet track. Um, Fury is one where if I listen to it again, I, I listen to the guitar, which is incredible. This song really reminds me of... Uh, a couple of his other story songs from back in the day, either I could never take the place of your man or uh, uh, maybe when you were mine, I don't know. Then we go into the word kind of a guitar driven song towards the end, much like fury was a guitar driven song throughout, but the word, you know, this is really the track if, now thinking back on it, that, I could hear Santana playing on and probably because on the backside of this song, Prince is playing in a guitar tone, not unlike Santana very much sounds Santana esque. Um, and it's a good track. Then we jump into beautiful loved and blessed. The other song that he did on Saturday night live, the song that is definitely a duet with Tamar, who I think was on the earlier song could be wrong. Um, then one that I completely forgot about of all this album, the one track that had totally slipped my mind was this song called the dance and hearing it again for the first time in years, 
It's not a bad song. As a matter of fact, when it gets to the last minute, we get into Prince, what I like to call begging Prince. You know, when he gets that that kind of yelling, screaming, baby, please don't go kind of uh, vocalization, begging Prince is what he's doing. And it sounds really cool. And it's a good way to end the track with him, you know, talking, talking to the girl he's talking to. Uh, and then finally, we wrap it up with one of my favorite closing tracks in the Prince catalog, Get on the Boat. And this is so funky. It clocks in at like six minutes. This could be, if you saw Prince live, and I'm sure that he that this happened around this time, I could see Prince jamming this one out 20, 30 minutes. This could be a never-ending funk jam. Just the way the keys are like an earworm to me. And it's so funky. And he brings in Maceo Parker. You know, I've put on a lot of concerts in my life. And probably one of the highlights of producing concerts was bringing Maceo Parker to Fayetteville, Arkansas in the late 90s. And Maceo brought with him, he brought Pee Wee and he brought somebody else. He brought, he brought two people that were in the JB Horns with him. And Maceo Parker played for four hours and five minutes, nonstop, four hours and five minutes before he hit the encore. He had his son with him on stage singing some, but Maceo Parker is amazing live, still performing. You should drop everything to go see Maceo Parker if you ever get the opportunity. But Maceo's on this track. We all know he played live with Prince for years there, you know, for, for a period of time, maybe 15 years. Maceo was playing with Prince. I could be wrong. If you're a Super Prince fan, shout me out in the comments. If you like to hear me talk about music, things that I love, like Prince, Concerts that I love going to, concerts that I'm checking out for the first time, new bands that I'm discovering through NPR Tiny Desk or through some late night shows, the things that go on Fallon or SNL or Colbert or Kimmel or wherever else. If you like hearing me talk about that kind of stuff, then do me a favor, please, and hit the subscribe button. Give me a like on this video because I like making these videos. There's, uh, there's one coming up on your screen right now, and it might even be something that you find highly entertaining. My name's Chris King, and I love live music.